Welcome to Tube Town. What we do here is the prep, lots of prep stages is going on here, preparing small wires and bits, and not to be overlooked at all is RoboTube. Come on in here and let's get a shot of the tube testing and our wonderful sign here, Welcome to Tube Town. Okay, so we had this tube testing apparatus made for us uh, on our design. This is actually the second one. This is son of RoboTube right here by a Southern California aerospace company. And what it does is it runs each tube through a battery of seven tests. Um, I don't need to get into all of the technical stuff and it includes the warm-up time, the performance in an amplifier, the static performance, the recovery performance, which I think is important, is so that the, the, the tube gets driven into a real massive hard clip, and then we want to make sure that it goes right back to normal, and that it doesn't have any any carryover, uh, you know, effect where that just a huge jolt of signal through it makes it have a hard time going back to its normal idle state. And um, and one other test that's very important too, you'll see here, is the famous hammer test, because we're also looking for mechanical strength and making sure that the tube isn't noisy when it's actually in an amplifier with a speaker vibrating it. So we have a speaker up here. And one other test that's really interesting too, um, actually can predict the life of the tube because if there's any contamination left inside the tube, uh, and let me point out that these silver spots on the, on the, almost every vacuum tube has a silver spot someplace on it. That's called the getter patch. And what happens at the last part of tube manufacturing is the tube's already been evacuated. That means the, it's already pulled a vacuum and the glass has been sealed around it. Even though there's now a vacuum inside the tube, there are still, because of the, the vacuum, there are impurities from the metal itself, literally, that boil out. It's similar to opening a bottle of champagne or a bottle of pop. When you reduce the pressure, suddenly there's all the bottle, all the bubbles. So all of that bubbles, all that CO2 was already dissolved in the, the, the champagne uh, until the pressure went down. And it's the same thing with the metal. There's actually metal bits that are totally happy as long as the, um, the, the pressure is the same. Suddenly they're in a vacuum and the metal bits actually boil out. That's what this is. This is the silver bit and what we try to do with that is deposit them someplace where they're out of the way because they are impurities. It's interesting how that happens too. At the end of the manufacturing cycle, a big coil comes down around the tube, doesn't touch anything, and about 5,000 watts of radio frequency is zapped in it, and the, the whole thing goes off almost like a light bulb, almost more like a flash bulb. Uh, it's called the getter flash, as a matter of fact, and these little disks up here that have got some kind of rare uh, chemical compounds when they get that heat, then they do whatever this flashing uh, process is, and that collects all of the impurities that have come out of the metal and it deposits on the glass. If that's not done adequately, and if there are any remnants left, then this machine will actually be able to, to measure that. It's, this, it's, a, it's a micro ampere. It's such a small amount of current that it's almost immeasurable. But it's something that we can set the threshold here, as we can every parameter on the, on the robo-tube, so, um, so that we can assure that the tubes that make it through this are really top quality. Okay, testing 12AX7s. This is the height of low tech and is absolutely the best test in the world. Here it is. This is, each tube is put into an amplifier, into the most sensitive spot, turned up wide open. Well, the operator beats the daylights out of it and makes a judgment call as to how noisy and quiet and stable it is. The tube obviously works. We know that electronically uh, already. Uh, but the thing that's the hardest to test is what's it going to be like in an actual guitar amp? In typical simple fashion, we cut right to the chase and put it in an actual guitar amp turned up, well, as you can hear from the hiss, turned up to a shatteringly loud volume. So we're in this little room here. Um, <laughs> and it's a long, tedious job, but it's really important. And, uh, no better way to do it than just in an amplifier cranked up wide open.